the 68-year-old guys getting second looks aren't the ones who stayed active. They're the ones who train like athletes. And there's actual study data showing the gap between these men and their sedentary peers isn't just visible. It's measurable in ways that'll surprise you. I've worked with men in their 60s and 70s for years. And the difference between athletic training and just moving around shows up in places you wouldn't expect. We're talking testosterone levels that rival men 15 years younger. Muscle density, you can see through a shirt, even how fast your brain processes stress. By the end of this, you'll know exactly where you fall on this spectrum. And more importantly, what changes when you shift from one side to the other? Because the Australian research team that tracked 2,200 men for over a decade found something that made them go back and recheck their numbers twice. The gap started showing up in the blood work first. Number one, the gap nobody talks about. The gap started showing up in the blood work first. Australian researchers tracked 2,200 men aged 60 to 75 for 12 years. They split them into two groups, athletic men who trained with structure and intensity and sedentary men who were just living, walking the dog, doing yard work, moving but not training. The testosterone difference? Athletic men at 65 averaged 487 nanograms per deciliter. Sedentary men? 312. That's a 56% gap. And it wasn't genetics. These were regular guys who'd simply chosen different paths. But testosterone was just the start. The athletic group had 7.3 kilograms more lean muscle mass. Their bone density in the femur neck, the spot that determines whether you break a hip or walk away from a fall, was 18% higher. Resting heart rate, 61 beats per minute versus 74. Grip strength, 48 kilograms versus 35. You can't fake grip strength. It's one of those dead giveaways. The sedentary men in this study weren't couch potatoes. Most walked daily. Some played recreational golf. A few did light yoga. They'd tell you they were active and by conventional standards they were, but their bodies told a different story. From a woman's perspective, the athletic men carried themselves differently. Not just posture, though that mattered, but the way they moved through space. There's a quiet confidence that comes from knowing your body can handle physical demands. You see it when a guy effortlessly picks up something heavy or stands from a chair without that little moment of hesitation. The sedentary group had lost that and most didn't even realize it was gone. When I first saw these numbers, I thought the researchers had cherry-picked extreme athletes, guys who'd been training their whole lives. They hadn't. These were men who started structured training in their 50s or stuck with it through their 60s. Normal careers, normal lives. So why did their bodies look 15 years younger than their sedentary peers? The answer isn't what most trainers will tell you, and it starts in a place you wouldn't expect. Number two, the cognitive physical connection. But testosterone wasn't even the most shocking finding. The cognitive testing results made researchers go back and double check their numbers. Memory recall was 18% better in the athletic group. Processing speed, how fast you react to information, was 23% faster. The mechanism, a protein called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It's essentially fertilizer for your brain. The athletic men showed a 40% increase in BDNF levels. The sedentary group, just 8%. Even the ones who walk daily. And that's the first mistake most men make. Thinking movement equals training. Walking is great, yoga is fine. But your body doesn't adapt to things it can already handle. You need to push past 80% of your max heart rate at least three times a week to trigger real neuroplasticity. Anything less, and you're maintaining, not building. I worked with a guy named Richard, 66, who'd been walking five miles a day for years, felt virtuous about it. But when we tested his VO2 max, how efficiently his body uses oxygen, he scored a 29. That's sedentary range. His brain wasn't getting the stress signals it needed to adapt. Compare that to the athletic group. VO2 max averaged 38. That's not just cardiovascular fitness. That's your brain getting flooded with oxygen-rich blood during intense effort, forcing it to build new neural pathways. The second mistake, avoiding intensity because it feels dangerous. Sedentary men in the study showed accelerated cognitive decline markers. Their cortisol, the stress hormone, took three times longer to return to baseline after any kind of challenge. Physical or mental, their bodies had lost the ability to recover. The athletic men, cortisol spiked during training, then dropped fast. Their nervous systems stayed resilient, sharp under pressure, calm afterward. 
most guys think slowing down protects them. It doesn't. It just speeds up the decline. Now, I need to tell you something that might sting, but it explains why some of you plateau despite training consistently. Number three, the James story, plus what actually defines athletic. Three months into working with James, he said something that shifted how I explain this to every guy over 60. James was 64, walked 10,000 steps daily, felt active, proud of his consistency. But when we ran his numbers, VO2 max at 28, muscle mass below the 25th percentile for his age, he tested firmly in the sedentary category. He looked at the results and said, I thought I was doing enough. Turns out I was just doing something. That's the distinction most men miss. Sedentary guys exercise, athletic men train. Training means you have a program, you track progress, you push heavier weight this month than last month. You're not just showing up, you're building something. The study defined athletic status pretty clearly. Three resistance sessions per week with progressive load. Two cardiovascular sessions at 75% or higher max heart rate. Mobility work twice weekly. Not complicated, but specific. And they found two principles that contradict what most trainers recommend for older guys. First, the athletic men lifted heavier relative loads than standard senior fitness programs suggest. They weren't doing 20 reps with pink dumbbells. They were working in the six to 10 rep range with challenging weight, building actual strength, not just going through motions. Second, they took longer rest periods, two to three minutes between sets, not 30 seconds like some high intensity circuit. Their bodies needed time to recover between efforts, and that recovery is what allowed them to lift heavy enough to trigger adaptation. James started following this protocol, stopped chasing step counts, started tracking his squat and deadlift numbers instead. Six months in, his VO2 max hit 34. Not elite, but solidly athletic for his age. More importantly, his wife mentioned he seemed more present, less irritable, that cortisol resilience showing up in real life. But most guys derail themselves before they ever get there. They make one mistake that costs them six to eight months of progress, and it's not about overtraining. Number four, the implementation gap plus three-phase framework. The mistake that costs guys six to eight months, starting with athletic level volume before their structure can handle it. You see a program, it says three days a week, four exercises, three sets each. Looks manageable, so you jump in, and for the first month, maybe two, it feels great. Then your shoulder starts nagging. Your knee gets cranky. You back off thinking your body's betraying you. It's not. Your tendons and joints just need 12 to 16 weeks to adapt to new loading patterns. Muscles respond fast. Connective tissue doesn't. So you've got to build in phases. Phase one is foundation. Weeks one through 12, two full body sessions per week, five to eight exercises, three sets of eight to 12 reps at about a seven out of 10 effort, two sessions of low impact cardio, 30 minutes in zones two or three, daily 10 minute mobility work. Boring, maybe, but this is where you earn the right to train hard later. Phase two is intensification, weeks 13 through 24. Now you split your training, push day, pull day legs, three sessions weekly. You start adding 2.5 to 5% more weight every two weeks, one high intensity interval session per week, eight to 10 intervals, 30 seconds on, 90 seconds off, one steady cardio session at 45 minutes. This is where strength actually builds, where your nervous system learns to recruit muscle fibers efficiently. Phase three is athletic maintenance, week 25 onward, three to four resistance sessions, two varied cardio sessions, and critically, you deload every fifth week, drop the weight, give your body space to consolidate gains, track your compound lifts, your resting heart rate, how fast your heart rate drops one minute after intense effort. Sleep quality. Most guys want phase three results in phase one timeframes. The athletic men in that study, they'd been training consistently for three years minimum, not three months. I'll be honest, when clients first hear that timeline, some bail. They want the shortcut, but there isn't one. Your body doesn't care about your impatience. The ones who stay? Month nine is when people start asking what they're doing differently. Number five, lifestyle multipliers plus the sleep variable. Now there's one more factor that separated these groups and the sleep data from this study bothered me for weeks until I tested something with my clients and saw the pattern. Athletic men average 7.4 hours of sleep per night. Sedentary men, 6.1 hours. 
But it wasn't just duration, it was quality. Sleep efficiency was 88% for the athletic group versus 76% for sedentary men. After 60, your growth hormone pulses during deep sleep declined 12 to 15% per decade. The athletic men maintained 40% higher deep sleep percentages. Their bodies were actually recovering while sedentary men were just lying in bed. And I noticed something with my own clients. Guys who trained hard but slept poorly had inflammatory markers identical to sedentary men. All that effort in the gym wasted because their bodies couldn't repair. Three habits the top performers never skip. Room temperature between 65 and 67 degrees. Last meal at least three hours before bed. 10 minute wind down protocol with no screens. Simple stuff, but consistency is everything. Protein timing matters too. Athletic men consume 30 to 40 grams of protein within 90 minutes post-training. Sedentary men had sporadic intake, often skipped post-workout nutrition entirely. Your muscles need that signal to rebuild. Miss it and you're leaving gains on the table. There's also a factor the study captured that surprised me, relationship satisfaction scores. Athletic men reported 82% satisfaction. Sedentary men, 61%. Physical capability affects confidence in every domain of your life, not just in the gym, in how you show up for your partner, how you handle stress at work, whether you feel like a participant in your own life or a spectator watching it slip by. The guys who look best at 67, they're not obsessing over macros or counting every calorie. They're sleeping 7.5 hours and training like their body is worth protecting because it is. So how long does it actually take to move from sedentary to athletic at this age? The answer depends on one factor most men assess incorrectly. So how long to go from sedentary to athletic? Based on this study and my experience, 18 to 24 months of consistent structured training, not casual exercise, not hoping three walks a week will do it. But the transformation isn't linear. James didn't feel dramatically different at month six. Month nine is when people started asking what he was doing. Month 14, he tested in the athletic category. The men in that study who maintained athletic status into their 70s, they didn't get there by overthinking. They got there by showing up, progressing load, sleeping hard, and trusting the process long enough to see compound results. You're not too old, your joints aren't too damaged, you're just operating in the wrong category. And now you know exactly what the athletic category looks like. It's the exact progression that takes the guesswork out of week to week planning. And if this kind of straight talk is useful to you, subscribe. I'm not here to sugarcoat or sell you shortcuts, just real information from men who are serious about getting better. You've got 20 plus good years ahead. Train like it.